Hey, hi, boys and girls. Um, I'm here with Tyler, and um, sorry I didn't shave, uh, but um, I didn't know I was going to be uh, a movie star today. So um, anyway, everybody tells me I have to look at something that I didn't have anything to do with, and it's going to be the console from the uh, from the Ionic Five, and I don't exactly know what's going on, but I already don't like whatever this is. So, um, so anyway, Tyler is going to help us out, and there's a black curtain over here, which probably means that they don't want me to have a stroke right away. So I'm sure that we're going to, um, I'm going to have some fun, or we're going to have some fun Absolutely. with Tyler in charge. So I'm just here as the innocent observer. Tyler, take it away. Alrighty, so my name is Tyler Schlink. I'm a senior consultant engineer here at Monroe and Associates. I've been on a couple of videos before, but I've, uh, over the last month or so, been responsible for helping do some of the Ionic teardown, um, which we're doing an internal report on and an internal teardown. I've done most of the interior thus far. Specifically, what we're gonna talk about today is the console. I thought it'd be a little bit fun to, um, since I disassembled this whole thing, costed it, mapped it, to, and Sandy's never seen it, to bring Sandy out here and kind of build it back up. Um, with lean design, design for assembly, kind of what Sandy built this company around, uh, I just over and over again while I was walking through this console, I saw a lot of um, broken rules with that design for assembly. Um, many fasteners, stuff being assembled in multiple directions and having to hold it multiple times. And I thought it'd just be fun to kind of show Sandy um, how this seemingly simple console looks uh, on the outside. It looks very simple, um, how complicated it is once you, once you peel it back. So I, Think we should get right into it so first well, let thing, me ask you a yeah, question yeah. are we going to insert like a picture of this thing so people yeah. can get a shot yeah. okay great and, okay. and the first thing you need to know about this console i believe we did an interior video on it um carl did a while back and i don't think he caught the fact that this console actually moves it's adjustable it's got like 14 positions and it moves like every 10 millimeters to, 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 and maybe if you're you're shorter you can slide it up there if you're taller you can slide it back and maybe it's a comfort thing but I didn't even realize that when I was asked to tear it down because they asked me how long it was going to take to tear down. They're like, you want to do the door trim? You want to do the console? I was like, ah, door trim console. That's a pretty simple console. It should take the same amount of time. Boy, was I wrong. The console was very, very complicated in the assembly mapping of what I had to. Um, hmm. Well, uh, I can add some color here. Um, I, know that, uh, I know that when Chrysler had the minivan, <clears throat> one of the biggest disasters they had was that movable console. Mm. It... Um, it only had, I think, two or three positions. Uh, this sound, this uh, one's got about 14 or 15. And actually, what we see here is the... Um, the um, so oh, it's actually, there's me. three lockers. Um, so it's basically 15 positions front to back, every 10 millimeters about, just under a half inch. So very, very <laughs> adjustable. But uh, if we look at these two components, which are part of the whole adjusting mechanism, which are kind of hidden to the outside viewer, you don't even know this is how it's working. But the first one is uh, the actual rollers, which, I mean, they look like little simple cabinet rollers, but this piece right here has 51 total components on it. If you count every roller with its stud on it, you count the nuts on the back side, you count all these Preston studs on the top, there's 51 total parts just on like the first mapped component. And of course I put a black curtain here because there's a lot more to go. Okay, so let's just have a look here. This is something uh, that I, uh, I can't even hardly imagine. If we look here, the, the, the rollers um, must have, um, yeah, they have, they have uh, uh, a, little, uh, a little Allen key there on this side. And then you've got uh, uh, what they used to call a castle nut. And the castle nut, from what I can see here, you see that little black stuff, uh, that's uh, that means it's a nylock uh, castle nut to keep it from backing out. But this is a, this is murderous to try and put together. Um, so I I never recommend them. Uh, so my <clears throat> these rollers uh, these rollers alone must take a they must take an awful lot of time, or they must have a, a fixture to die for. I, I, and they're on both sides. I, I can't. One of the first thing, first rule this violates, other than you know assembling from both directions, is just um, 
kind of like the tightness, the access point. There's like little to no access to actually hold those nuts while you're running. Well, oh, you're going to have to use an open or box wrench course, or an open end wrench to, to or, get in there. Or a, a special tool, like you said. They might have a very nice fixture to help them with this, but they had to pay for that fixture to make this easy to assemble instead of just maybe. <laughs> well, this ain't easy. And this is, uh, so what we have here is an extrusion. And this right there, that's waste. That's cut out waste. That's called offal. And you can't do anything with it. So you mill it out, or in this case, it looks they like water jet. Yeah, they might have stamped it or water jetted out. Or maybe stamped, I'm not sure, I can't tell. But at the end of the day, that's a lot of scrap for a little teeny tiny part like this. I, I don't wanna go into redesign, but holy moly, this is a... Yeah, if we went into redesign mode, that would <laughs> take a lot of time. Um, I'm gonna kinda, I'm gonna actually, we could probably peel back the curtain now if you want, and we could start building this thing up. I don't know how easy oh, yeah. this stuff's gonna come off of here, but. So that's all the components that it takes to get this thing to the, huh. pi the picture you saw at the I beginning of the video. I can make another car out of this. <laughs> this, is inc this is an incredible amount of parts. How many parts are total on this? Uh, I'll have, we'll have a number pop up on the screen. I'll get that after the end. Uh, there's 51 total if you count the fasteners just on that part. So pieces versus fasteners, I'll have to divvy that up and put it in the video after this. How much else moves in here? Uh, this, the this... only other thing that moves is the center or the, the armrest folds up and down like a typical armrest. But there's what's unique about this console is there's no storage bin. It's an open concept. So for how complicated it is when I'll show when we assemble it, there's no other bins or anything like that. It's a pretty bare bones console other than the fact that it just moves back and forth. So um, the first thing we can do, Sandy, if you want, we can get into assembling this adjustment mechanism, which I had to pre-assemble this part because <laughs> it likes to fall apart on you. Looks like a mouse trap. It's, uh, it's the linkage mechanism um, to unlock this. And it basically, you have to put all that together and hold it together, which I- So here's the three I, pins that go in those mm -hmm. holes I take So it. I did this before the video even started, but it took me a little while to get this together because you actually have to put everything in its place and then hold it together or it pops apart. And you have to hold it together and get it assembled here first. And if you could grab that uh, nut driver, <laughs> we actually have to hold it together and get it down on there. Oh, and see, look at it's, that spring's already caught. I wasn't paying attention. So let's back it out a little well, bit. It's, that it's spring is that, that you don't know how to be an operator. Exactly That's right. The, 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 this this is perfect in every way. It's perfect, right? And I and I've actually pre-assembled this to make so it easy. So let me ask you a question. How does this work? I'll show you here in a second. So let's run that down. We're not going to run down all the bolts today, just enough to get this thing yeah, I guess. where it needs to be. Okay, now you bend that down and hold that here. And now, <laughs> while you're putting this thing in, you got to hold that up as you slide it. And that's the only way to assemble these two. Now it's, it's good. It's, a, it's actually Holy assembled. mackerel. Um, but what we forgot to do is actually pre-build up this part. So we talked about the part with 51 pieces. We didn't talk about this part at all. Um, we're gonna build it up right now, even though it's probably likely built up as a sub-assembly. First is you have these two parts come down here. And once they're down, you have to run in bolts from the side. Uh. Yeah, you gotta come in sideways on them. So not a downward direction. Um, well, not only that, I mean, this, from is, both something, sides. this is something that I could, I could make a snap fit out of. Correct, yeah, and so I gotta do that on all these parts and I gotta come in from the side and every time I gotta rotate it around. Then you have this piece right here, which you'd love to assemble it in the exact same direction, but you can't. The bolts actually come in from this side and let me get this oh, off. Oh, you got. You gotta hold it. You gotta hold it and get the bolt started, um, which of course, like we said, they have fixtures to make this easier on their operators, but it's still... Yeah, but parts are supposed to fixture themselves one to another. Exactly. And this is my oh, point. Is, there go. we go. This is my point is it's not um, going together. It requires you to know what you're doing. And I've actually spent a lot of time with this console and it still confuses me. Um, no. It's... Pull it. Or, or actually... Well, either way, it's in there. But there's four bolts that would hold that now, and so you have to flip well, this directions. This one here um, isn't lining up because it's kind of skewed. Which is part of the 
The assembly process, yeah, well, part of the problem. you're not going to make that work. Uh, there's no pin or alignment pin or something. There's a hole here. Mm -hmm. uh, was there a pin in it at one time? No, that is exactly how it came together right there. I actually pulled it apart right before you came out here. So there, there's no pin. You can flip it over and take a look. There's no alignment pins. So I see. Yeah, nope, it just kind of wiggles in there. And so we just pushed it to mate. So now, now it'll go through. There's a little tiny pin right here you can kind of see but it's not doing a great job there. So we'll secure that up. Okay, so that's that. We have our moving back and forth mechanism. Of course, we didn't talk about that, which had to be drilled down. Um, and, I've seen and needed... seat mechanisms that are less complicated. Mm -hmm. Why didn't they just... And there's yeah. plastic fittings that go in there that have to be pre-assembled so you can screw into the plastic fitting. So just between these two parts alone, we're talking, <laughs> we're well over probably 60, 70 parts. Um, and then I had to find this out the hard way, but you're not done assembling this mechanism. Um, there's a couple more components that can't go in until after it's in this position because you can't slide this on because they hit. And they're basically the bump stop components. And these bump stop components are what are at your fore and aft position. So there's two of these that have to be located and pokey oak, you can't get it in that way. Can't get it in that way. There it goes. Um, and there's a the nuts that hold those down. There's two of these. So I won't be putting all this together, but there's one there, one there. So we'll put one of these down. And then the next fun one is the final bump stop, which is another one of these upside down mechanisms. You actually have to come from underneath. It's likely they flip this over and put it in from the bottom, but the screw comes from this I side. I doubt it. That this kind of like the only way I'd be. So you got to hold it from the bottom as you put it oh from the top. Oh my God. And now your bump stop mechanisms are all in order, so it'll actually hit so what's the that front thing and back. There, then? That would be your other one. I didn't assemble the other one yet. I'm basically trying to speed this up, but there's a lot of parts that we probably just won't Why assemble. Why is there two bump stops in the same direction? I'm guessing it's a force thing. They, want, they, they apparently one wasn't enough in case you hold this button and kick the console forward, but they wanted two bump stops there, and both oh. are bolted down. Mm -hmm. Okay, so huh. and this is I, just the mechanism. We haven't even got to what I'm usually focusing on, which is the trim and the plastic parts above. Oh. Okay, so, um, um, I, uh, okay, I see lots of stuff, and this is not what I'd expect from Honda, Hyundai. I, I don't know, I don't know how this happens, but um, usually what happens is somebody some uh, purchasing agent or whatever says, let's outsource it. And, um, and this, maybe this turns into a black box, but this violates everything. Actually, okay, so I was in my office, I was creating the PowerPoint that I'm gonna be using for the training and whatnot. I guess maybe, oh, maybe, yeah, I do. Okay. Uh, we're gonna have a, a little workshop. And um, in that workshop, um, in a, in a couple of weeks or something, I'm going to talk about how how we how we look at at redesigning or designing initially right and and how we could redesign this. So this is uh, this is a little card that uh, that we use. Oh, this is the wrong one, but anyways, um, we'll uh, we'll show you a picture of the right one. And and on there it says um, there are two rules that we have for determining whether a part has value. One rule is does it have to move? Have to. Does it have to move? And the second uh, rule is, um, does this part have to fundamentally be a different material? And if the answer to those is no, then you look for combination or elimination of that part. Okay, um, this thing, this thing violates both those rules. And by the way, one of them where you have no choice, if it looks like a spring, or a fastener or a belt. I'm surprised they don't have a belt yeah, here. Yeah, of like the 60, 70 components we have in here, realistically only the linking mechanisms and the two separate pieces have to move. Other than that, like here's a simple example. Why is this a stamping and this is um, plastic injection, plastic molding. injection molding right next to each other and I just showed you how complicated they are to put together. Why couldn't that be one injection mold? Well, I, I'm wondering um, why the whole bottom isn't, a, isn't an injection molding. I yeah, mean, I've got... that's a good point because um, like window regulators and door trim, um, they slide up and down yeah. uh, 
slots like this in plastic on door I mean, modules this for does, windows. Doesn't, this doesn't look like a Hyundai. This, if you're if you're doing like glass filled nylon and you're doing glass filled polypropylene, oh, can, it can be more than strong enough. I to, could I can make this more than strong enough in plastic, and that's what I would expect that it should be. Um, and I don't know why. I don't know why it looks like this. I haven't seen this much. The concentration of uh, fasteners here is stug stunning. And that, like I said, um, if it looks like a fastener, if it looks like a, like a belt, um, or if it looks like a spring, then it's an immediate candidate for elimination or combination. And quite frankly, there's a million ways to get rid of that spring. Um, what, what else goes, is there some kind of handle on here? Yeah, this is so sharper one, than a once, razor. I, once I build up the rest of the- I could shave the, with this. <laughs> there's plastic pieces. So once we snap the rest of the plastic <clears throat> trim pieces, the, there's a whole front panel that has a linkage that catches on this and a little slide. There's a linkage? Uh, it, basically a metal linkage that attaches to a plastic uh, button. With, um, so this has something going up and then you, you do it up here instead of down here? I mean, uh, oh, look I, at your seat. Actually, your sorry, seat. apologies. It's a pla glass filled plastic linkage. That goes up to um, the, pla actually, I think it goes the other way. Um, there we go. And it goes up to a button in the, the front of the plastic right here that pulls up and down. Um, so, like I know uh. that we're already probably pretty long in this video already, but uh, it, it doesn't stop. As we build up the plastics, it's amazing the number of fasteners coming from each direction holding these plastics pieces on. There's like snap fits with screws coming from the backside, even though it's snap fit everywhere. Um, there's little individual felt BSR patches, hand placed. What for? Everywhere. Just for buzz squeak rattle, like on all these plastic components, just a ton of it. Um, and it, 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 from a consumer standpoint, it'll stop, you know, having those rattle noises. So that consumers would appreciate it, I guess, but it's the amount of effort it takes to put. One of the parts I alone, can design this so it won't make any noise. Yeah, I, this I part mean, alone right here has, I believe, 32 individually placed felt BSR patches on top of the okay. snap fits. Yeah, so that the snap fits don't rattle. Um, and this is just one plastic part and there's a lot of plastic parts on this and they all, just a lot of individual labor m movements that I had to, to calculate and map on the assembly of this thing. I I'm happy to keep building this up. Um, oh I'll let the Monroe God. Live team decide how far we should take this video. Uh, oh. But we could keep going for yeah, a long time on this console. Post a couple more on there. Yeah. Okay, so now this is okay. The main so there's substrate. no uh, okay, but it's all right. Not... So let's let's just let's okay. just look at this. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a really complicated plastic injection molding. If you can do that, you can't. You tell me you can't do this. What? What are you kidding me? It gets this. better, Sandy. Really? You would think that their uh, structure. Yeah. See how it's not exactly intuitive to know where to drop that on because all the studs. You actually have to move it forward more. Right there. Eventually, it'll drop. They aren't lining up. There's too many points of contact. Yeah, so this actually, isn't uh, working here at all. We move this back a little bit. Go. There, so it drops in. Um, and then you put in eight uh, nuts per sides. One, two, three, four. Uh, no, four nuts per side. But you can't put them in every single one. A couple of these you can't put them on because it's actually for other stuff. And this is where it gets real fun. So you'd think they would do just that. But it gets more complicated. And I'm not even gonna bother with fasteners anymore because there's a lot of them. This goes on the front, snap down, fastener this side, turn it around, fastener this side. I'm gonna go quickly. This comes in from that side, one, two, three, fast. So it snaps in place and then we run more One, two, screws. three, yep. Yeah. Okay, and you think you're done. That's plastic. Nope. Now we need a metal structure. Oh, you got it. That drops in here. And that has four or five nuts here. And then, oh, this is a fun one, individual fasteners that you actually need a small screwdriver for or a special 90 degree tool because you can't actually get in there with that tool. So you got to use a stubby. You have to use a little stubby or a special tool. Or There's right angle. One, two, three, one, two, three, and then all those nuts. Hold that down. Not done yet, Sandy. Not done. Then this piece comes in from the back side and gets and sandwiches those two metal pieces and you need these long bolts to go through and squeeze all that structure, your main structure, 
the second plastic structure, the first metal bracket, the second metal bracket, and then squeeze it all together as one um, brick S house, as we would say in Michigan. I won't say the, the actual word. <laughs> it is rock solid. And we're still no, not this even- is it. No, I'm telling you what right now. Okay, so we've got tons and tons of examples that look like this, this whole top section. All in one part. All in one part. Yeah. All made out of plastic. This, this, uh, this product right now has slides up the yin yang. There's well, no reason in the world why you can't. So, I mean, here's just a simple, I know, obviously this doesn't move back and forth and that's one of their um, features of this, which um, <laughs> obviously is gonna make it a little more complicated, but this is the, the Mustang Mach-E, right? Like yeah. the A surface is basically the structure itself you know, there's a couple steel brackets that it mounts to, um, of course, a little bin, but. Well, if we look at that bin and uh, we look at what we've got here, mm -hmm. you can see that there's more direction of, uh, of travel for the, <clears throat> for the molds, the inserts, the slides, the lifters, whatever. You can see that there's a ton of stuff going on in here, even at an angle, pulling on a, and, and then we look at this, and in essence, this is basically um, kind of like a top-down kind of, kind of unit now i may not i may have a problem with that but maybe what i can do is just redesign this a little bit so that i can get that bridge without getting all of this other muck and as far as i'm concerned yeah well what we've seen on some um consoles with like obviously we didn't bolt that down but maybe like a bmw or like a cadillac center console where they have like air ducts running through them yeah we've seen a lot of people split the ducts right or, or sorry split, split the, the structure structure and, and then, then the two structures right. come together in like hot plating right and splitting that gives you obviously different die draft angles Not only to that, where you can it's, accomplish it's, stuff like this yeah. without needing but the, but the thing is <clears throat> it cuts your cost significantly because <clears throat> you get rid of a whole bunch of slides and lifters because now my line of draw is like this it's easy and I make two of them and I kind of glue it together. Yep. This, this thing here, how many, how many nuts you got holding this thing on? Where's your? Uh, just this structure right here has eight nuts that are placed. Okay, let me, uh, I, you I, can't, I, wanna, yep. I can't. Well, it's funny is you're actually, you're, see how you're accessing the wrong nut? We didn't actually put any nuts on this one yet. Really? Um, so you have to be careful when you're going that some nuts are poking through from, um, some Underneath. parts that are behind it. And once we put this metal bracket on here, you actually can't even access the back nut. So in order to pull this whole um, you gotta take mechanism whole off this, like I would like to pull that off as a subassembly. I tried to do it. And the one thing stopping me from doing that was two nuts back here that this stamp steel blocks that you can't get to unless you disassemble everything that I showed you thus far. It has to be disassembled and assembled piecemeal like that. You can't do any um, subassembly so, buildups. So anyway, um, oops. This is the little card that the whole company at Monroe is based on. Um, and it says, uh, change the rules, and it's the part value challenge. Does it have to move? Does it have to be a fundamentally different material? And when in doubt, throw it out. So springs, screws, and, fa and belts are something that you don't want to have. Why is that? Because like it says right there, poor quality drivers. These are the things that cause no end of grief, cost you a tremendous amount of money in labor, and also kill the quality. So I'm looking at this, and I'm saying to myself, how many of these parts have to move? None. None. Do they have to be different materials? Nope. Yet there's one, two, three, four, five individual parts we assemble, not counting fasteners, five right. major components. And so somebody's gonna come along and say, oh, we need that steel bracket, really? Where did that, uh, where did that, uh, uh, where did that, uh... oh, it's aluminum. Oh, well, that, no, no, that makes no, it no, okay. Said, it's steel, but it's in there, oh. I said, yeah. Yeah, we never but took at it the apart. end of the day, we don't, <laughs> this is plenty strong. I don't know what this is. I don't see anything marked Our on it. Glass filled poly what, pro. 30, 30%, something like that. That's why I kept the map open, just so I... Mm, good idea. Glass filled 50, 50, actually. It's glass filled 50. 50. <laughs> okay, so you know what? Um, that means it is steel, okay? You don't need to... Huh. I mean, this is... Uh, I haven't seen anything like this for a long, long time. This is a good example of a bad example. And, and quite frankly, there's no reason on the planet that these, this, this carrier slide couldn't have been part of this. So... I could have got rid of that 
all these fasteners, almost all of them, uh, and turn this into, uh, like you were saying, I could, I could use a, a split mold. I could make this so it would snap together and then I could sonically weld it and, uh, or glue it or whatever yeah, it, you want to do. It's hard to come up, and I've battled with this myself because our job isn't to, no one's paid us to do a redesign and that takes a lot of thought and effort. Um, I've just been costing it, mapping it, helping create the reports, but like, well, that's to, your first to, to come up with a re redesign, like there is this no is like shortage of like, of grab any one of these parts and we could do a workshop on it, like any one of the parts. So like it, there's more than one way to skin the cat on redesigning it, but there's a lot of different ways in which this could be made with How many parts components. total on this thing? Uh, you asked me that earlier. Um, we'll get the number up. Unfortunately, I don't have that number available right now, but we'll I'm going to guess it. a couple of hundred. Oh, oh yeah. Like uh, we're basically approaching, if you're counting fasteners, we're approaching 100 and we haven't even got to here yet. <laughs> okay, so yeah. let's say 200. So right now I can see, how many did you say was here? Uh, I think or so? if once again with fasteners, we were at like 70 or something. 70. At that point. Individual 70. moving separate components, lots. I I'm gonna can, have fun counting after this. I'm video. telling you what, I, and, and I think I could improve it because Quite frankly, with this many components and this many screws, um, you're going to wind up with uh, a tremendous amount of stack up. A st uh, stacked, stacked error just means that sooner or later, if you've got this many components, something's going to go wrong. When uh, Dr. Deming used to give his speeches, all he talked about was, um, you know, variation. Add a screw, that's one variation. Add 70 screws, uh, that's a lot more variation. Oh, well, it, it'll be better if it, it'll be stronger or something if you put more stuff in. No, it gets worse. I, I'm going to take this. I'm going to use this in the, um, in the workshop we're doing okay. just so people can get a, an idea of how much you can get out of this. So I'll, I'll do the... Uh, uh, yeah, we can talk after this. About yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest that we do maybe not a whole redesign, but a partial redesign. And I'm telling you what, I'll bet you we get this down to about 40 parts and it'll still have that, uh, that tracking mechanism. And it won't, it won't look any different. It'll look exactly the same on the outside because we don't bother with skin. If it's uh, art, we don't, we don't fool with it. Anything below the skin is fair game. And I'm telling you what. So once we get to the, the upper layer, um, of course, some of this stuff, here's just another good example. Like these are just the side covers. One of the simplest components, they snap on. They snap on from the side and like lovely. However, even after they snap on, you have to come from the backside and do three fasteners with a stubby from here, and I believe one fastener from the top For here. What? Uh, oh, that's the. It's just extra security on everything. There's not one, maybe one, but most plastic components I pulled off here, every single one was snap fit in some way, but also a fastener. Well, these snap fits are it's, pretty it's good. It's just like a backup fastener or a fastener usually coming from the backside, which means it's not just a snap and then a fastener. It's a snap, flip it over get access and do a backup fastener. So just a lot of fastening operations. So design for assembly, not so much. <clears throat> not at all. So um, uh, I, I thought the Ionic was pretty good from a manual. What the hell's this? <laughs> What's this? Uh, let's just do a mega video. Let's just go for an hour. Uh, this <laughs> has to be, so this right here, I had to map and assemble this whole thing, which is why we're at like, you know, when I said 472 parts, all the components it takes to make up this hinging mechanism. Is this the, is this the hinging it, mechanism for the, uh, for the armrest? Exactly, yeah. So it, there, it's, you have to build that up. And I'm missing components that are like springs and plastic pieces I had to pull off that have to be assembled. But once you get this beast assembled, you then slide it uh, in this way, like that. And then you have to have come in here from fastener here, fastener here. Um, fold this up, fastener here, fastener here, really tight fasteners, and then it's a two-way. So you can open just a little cubby um, that's on the armrest, not like a built-in bin, it's like a little cubby, so it's like a two-way hinge armrest. So oh, just yeah, the cubby yeah. or the whole armrest goes up with this hinge, which is why it's a lot tougher. So basically, if you want to put a big purse in here, you'd flip the whole armrest up, tuck the purse, close it, and there's a separate little cubby for like your wallet and small items up here. But that, that hinge assembly is massive, massive, heavy, a massive. Lot, a lot of individual parts there, and a tight assembly operation. Um, like I said, we could keep going. Uh, it's it's never-ending. Um, a lot, a lot of components that have to be assembled. 
to get this thing. So what seemingly looked like a simple console was not, unfortunately. I can't even imagine how, how you could put this thing into the market. Yeah, and, and that's where you come into internal standards within companies. I know with consoles in specific, they have what's called like a side push requirement because they're basically a tall uh, lever. Okay, so and, that's and, this part up here. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and, and all right, if you push on this, like I said, uh, glass filled polypropylene, 50%, which is staggering. Um, th that's as strong as steel. I, I don't need I don't need anything other than that. And to attach the tracking mechanism, the rolling mechanism, to the bottom of that, that should be a piece of cake. I mean, there's really no there's no reason for all this. I, I'm just like I say, a little bit shocked. It just doesn't seem right to me that this is a, this is a Hyundai. All right, Sandy, let's wrap this one up. <laughs> okay. He doesn't want to. <laughs> no, I, I can tell you right now, um, uh, I, I think that uh, I'm gonna get in touch with, um, I'm gonna have one of our guys get in touch with Hyundai. Have we found anything else like this? That's, or is this an anomaly inside this? So car? this is definitely the worst of it. Um, but I have noticed just as I've disassembled the interior that they are not afraid of individual um, assembly labor parts, um, like stuff that would normally be built up in like a sub assembly and then attached to something as a module. Uh, they build it up, they line build it up on, on like in a line side or not necessarily in, line side. Let it, me give you an example on the, on the line. Not necessarily on the line, let's say instrument panel, for example. Instrument panel, normally you'd have the instrument panel and then you'd have your steering sub assembly and the right. steering sub assembly decks right. uh, so with like three yeah. bolts, four right. bolts. That steering sub assembly was pre-built, like the airbag and, well, maybe not the airbag, but the steering wheel and the column yeah. and everything. Uh, I've been tearing apart the IP and basically in order to assemble it to the IP, it's actually gotta be piecemealed. You have to assemble just the column to get all the bolts in and then you gotta assemble uh, the steering that's wheel. All line, that's, that's all on well, the it would, line. It would be the, yeah, maybe not the main line, of course, but it's at like, um, it's not line a, it's side, not, whatever. Yeah. It's got to be done line side. Yeah, so normally you'd take, like, there'd be an offline sub assembly for a steering wheel and then it mates up with the main IP assembly. The steering wheel, entire s column sub assembly is built up on the IP with the main IP line. Um, so there's a lot of little stuff like that where they're just not afraid of that. How that much does this individual. thing weigh? Uh, ooh, good question. That is something that is easy to look at. The whole floor console is, assuming the roll-ups are working, 19.4 kilograms. Oh, you got to be kidding me. So that would be times 2.2, 42, 42.6 pounds. Um, once again, I'll double check that number. Okay, well, I'm going to go down and talk to Mike, and um, um, I think that we could, uh, I think that we can help Hyundai out with this for sure. I'm not sure about all the other stuff, and I don't understand why this looks like it looks. This is not normal um, for for what a Hyundai product looks like. So um, maybe it's an opportunity to show off. Uh, what we can do. Maybe that's what we should do. We'll redesign it and, and use it as another, uh, another example of uh, what we can do here. What we really do at Monroe is redesign products or design products. And we would never design this product, never. Um, I would have guts for gravy if somebody came up and showed me that this was what we were gonna do and they brought it up in CAD. There'd be, uh, uh, I, I'm kind of like near uncontrollable when I see this kind of stuff. I think that uh, I think that we can redesign this. My guess is that if it if it reaches eight or nine kilograms, I'll be shocked, and that's a fact. There's no reason why this thing has to be 20 kilograms. 20 kilograms. I mean, when you look at uh, you know when you're looking at weight, that's the worst. That's their number one enemy in an electric car is weight, and 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 this thing is 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 19 kilograms. I uh, or 40. 42, 43 pounds. Mm -hmm. I can't, uh, I can't fathom that. That's just, that's just wrong. Somebody's not paying attention. Um, I would expect, like I say, nine, nine kilograms. So maybe there's 10 kilograms that can be uh, gotten out of here, maybe even more. 
But anyway, stay tuned. We're going to redesign this. Anyway, uh, we went over a lot. <laughs> Sorry, I, that's me just going crazy. But at the end of the day, um, thank you very much for watching Monroe Live. Um, for anyone out there, this is uh, kind of one of the things you're going to get when you come, if you come to the, um, if you come to that, uh, that executive training workshop, I guarantee you, you're going to walk away looking at this or anything else like that in any kind of a vehicle. I don't care if it's an airplane or a car or a refrigerator. Um, you do, you do get a different point of view on things. And this, uh, this will be something that you'll look at and say, oh, that's not what we're going to do in the future. Um, now I'm babbling. I, I'm really shocked. I, uh, I did get caught off a little bit off guard here. <sighs> Tyler. Anyways, <laughs> anyway, um, it was worth it. I, I, I am shocked. I, I can feel my blood pressure going up and I got to stop. Okay. Thanks for watching Monroe Live and uh, stay tuned for, uh, for more, uh, more episodes. And this one in particular, I think we're going to take a shot at redesigning this to see what, what, um, what we can do. We did that with Tesla. Why not do one for Hyundai? Anyway, so long. Thanks, Tyler. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.